describe as a, a double-edged sword. <laughs> so on one side of that sword, you have the nurturing aspect, you know, caring for the younger brother, uh, making sure I got my ducks in a line and everything. And probably the more important side of that sword is putting me in my place and uh, <laughs> checking me and making sure I'm being humbled uh, quite frequently. So uh, it, w it took a while for that nurturing aspect to kick in. <laughs> and so a lot of my younger memories were in fact more on the, the humility portion of uh, her putting in her in my place. So one of the very first memories I have um, was Amy and I would play board games sometimes before school. And so we were both in elementary school and I was very, very, very competitive growing up and I just could not beat Amy at chess. So one of these times I went in and she's probably talking a little more smack than she usually did. And she beat me down big time in chess and sent me to school crying the entire day. I had to spend half the day with a guidance counselor before I could compose myself to not distract the, uh, the rest of the class and go into the rest of the class. So lots of that you know there's also countless memories of getting pinned down by katie and amy and having our dog lick my face um and so it took a, a while before that uh bullying i don't know what you'd call it but that that part of the relationship kind of turned into the more nurturing aspect of uh our, our relationship you see now so like in, in terms of the nurturing it kind of first started i would say when i was more in middle school you're in high school uh, mostly because I was a little more physically fit than her at that point. Katie had gone to college, they couldn't double team me anymore, and I could fend for myself a little bit more. So maybe that was part of it, maybe it was just growing up, you know. Uh, but it first kind of started with mom and dad would be out on date night, you know, Amy would we'd go grab meals or whatever, go to Poncheros or Chipotle, wherever, uh, and, and that was kind of the first exposure I had to that. The second exposure I had to that uh, was in college actually and if you don't know this the best hack to get friends in college is to have a fifth year senior when you're a freshman and she can get you alcohol for you and all your buddies so when I was a freshman Amy was doing her victory lap here in Ames um, and so every Friday we had this deal where if we went out to dinner, she'd go run up a hundred dollar tab at the little, at the Ivy liquor store, and I'd go distribute this to my friends. <laughs> so in the beginning, you know, it started as a very good way for me to have a good time on weekends and everything. Amy was such a good trooper and everything. But as that kind of developed, um, the alcohol became more of an excuse for me to go, you know, eat dinner with my cool sister um and, and hang out with her so as i kind of grew up um amy was always there to really kind of keep an eye on me keep me under her wing <coughs> um and just really be a good big sister and one a good example of that you know stress as a college had really gotten to me at one point uh called her in the middle of the night and she was living in west des moines i was in ames and we just ate mcdonald's in a parking lot at what 10 p.m for a while <laughs> she called me down sent me back on my way uh, uh and and got me uh you know fixed up and everything but that that's the the more nurturing aspect that um i think we see a little more today you know she can't really get me uh in chess and that kind of stuff send me to, to school crying but um really uh the, the, the big sister uh, in her that's, that's really shown. Um, and so then that kind of fast forwards to like, Amy and I were probably, for the longest time, we were destined to be roommates in the basement of mom and dad. <laughs> so Katie and Taylor, you know, were married and they were doing their thing. And then there was always Amy and I who were like the awkward youngest couple. We didn't have a boyfriend, girlfriend or anything. So we were, we were gonna go do that and you know eventually we caught wind that that brendan was in the picture and there's you know they kind of alluded to it a little bit but as a younger brother you know how concerning it is that your sister meets some random guy on a dating site and says let's go for a hike in the middle of the woods uh, never met you, you know and so it was kind Amy, were you thinking when that happened? You know, but they got past all those red flags. Somehow that didn't stand out. And we are where we are today. And Katie kind of alluded to the fact of how we all first met as kids. 
and that was on a ski trip out to Colorado. <laughs> So obviously, Amy, not great at skiing. You know, you're great at many other things, Amy, but skiing is just not your thing. Brennan, very good trainer, very patient. But the one detail Katie forgot to mention is we had this long day on the slopes and we came back and we were having a bonfire, taking turns, going to shower. And Brendan took first hips and dibs on the shower. Well, one detail that Katie and Taylor kind of forgot about their uh, bathroom is that they don't have a, uh, a, a, privacy. a privacy glass on their shower. <laughs> so Brendan went in there, and thank God that thing's chest and above. <laughs> uh, we, we got to see Brendan a little uh, more intimate than most people would see on that first runaround. For like 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing bad about that, but there was kind of that old oh, crap moment. Like, oh, let's uh, be careful here. But so that's how we got to meet Brendan. Um, and you know, the, these last few years have really been hard. And they say you can really, you know, learn about how much you love someone by by how you look at someone. And Amy, as we all know, had a little brief stint where she couldn't talk uh, a little bit ago. And so we had some time in the hospital, um, and you could just tell the way she looked at Brendan, um, what, what, the, 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 how much they loved each other. And it, the way she looked at Taylor and I when we walked away was just a little different. It wasn't the same, you know, it was a little different. And so you could really tell there was something going there. And Brendan, you know, stayed by her side and all that. Uh, and, and we're very thankful that you're not only dating Amy, but dating the remaining uh, Whiteman clan that you see here. Uh, you know, you kind of are doing a little one-on-five on, one on five situation, so uh, we really appreciate you being open to that. Um, and the last thing I'll say is they say the best way to a person's heart is through their stomach. And Brendan, you have done that for me and throughout all the family because I've put on probably 30 pounds, uh, you know, eating your cooking. So. Um, you guys are amazing. We're so happy for you and can't wait to see where everything takes you. And I'm getting cut off by food, so uh, let's raise a glass.